Hello and welcome. I'm Laura from the BusyBeePost.com. Today's topic is on how to use GNU Cash free accounting software to set up a household budget. If this will be your first time using GNU Cash, you can look in the description for a link to the GNU Cash website and instructions on how to install it. If you like my tutorials and find them helpful, please subscribe and don't forget to give a thumbs up. In this quick start tutorial, we will create a zero-based budget. A zero-based budget helps you to monitor your expenses and ensure you have enough money to cover necessary bills and costs throughout a given period of time. Reach your saving goals and avoid overspending by identifying where your money is being spent. Let's begin. Step 1. Select the template. The GNU Cash Simple Checkbook template will give you exactly what you need to set up a simple yet powerful household budget. Begin by selecting File on the menu bar and then New File. Select the Next button until you reach the GNU Cash template screen. Unless you need to change the currency, which you can do by clicking on the drop down arrow. On the Choose Accounts to Create screen, by default, Common Accounts is selected. Deselect the Common Accounts by clicking on the check mark and use the scroll bar to scroll up to select the Simple Checkbook template by clicking on the checkbox next to a Simple Checkbook. On the right hand side, you can see the Simple Accounts we will be working with. Now scroll down and select Finish and on the next screen select Apply. Now you should be on the Save As screen. Here's where you will name your budget file and create a folder to save the file in. On the left hand side, select where you want to save the file on your computer. I will select my Documents folder. Then scroll up and enter a name for the file into the Name Field text box. Here I will simply enter Household Budget. Next. Select the file folder icon on the right hand side and enter the name of the folder you want to hold the file and click on the create button to create the folder. Then scroll down to the bottom of the screen and click on the save as tab. Now you should be on the simple checking account screen. Here we have three columns here. The account, the description and the total which is a little much. If you like, we can remove the description column since you really don't need it unless for some reason you feel you do. To hide the description column, scroll over to the right hand side and click on the drop down arrow. Scroll down the list and click on the check mark alongside description to remove the check mark. That should remove the description field so that only the accounts column and the total column is visible. Now, if you need to widen the columns, you can do so by pointing to the top column line until the double arrow appears. Then hold down the left side of your mouse and drag the column to your desired width. In this next step, we will create the budget accounts. First, we'll begin by setting up the income and expense category placeholders, which may or may not be set by default. Beginning with the Expenses account, highlight the account and select Edit on the toolbar and then scroll down and select Placeholder by clicking on the checkbox and select OK to save the changes and do the same thing with the Income account. Starting with the Type and Total Income you normally receive each month and want to include in your budget. Create an account for it. Begin by clicking on the income account to highlight it. Then select the new button on the toolbar. When the dialog box opens, enter a name for the account. The description is optional, especially if you have the description field hidden. There's no need to enter anything here. When finished, select OK to save the changes. 
Here I have my list of income accounts. Now using the same method we used to create the income accounts, think about all the different type of expenditures you normally spend money on in a given month and want to include in your budget and create an account for it. Here is an example of some common household accounts I created. Depending on your circumstances, your list may be far different from these. Don't forget to add a savings expense account if that is your goal. You'll notice that the accounts automatically list in alphabetical order. Now it's time to set up the GNU Cash budget by selecting Actions on the toolbar and then Budget and then New Budget. By default, GNU Cash sets up the budget in 12 monthly periods beginning on the first day of the month you are in. We can customize the budget by selecting the Options button on the toolbar. Here you can see you have various options to customize the budget. You can name the budget, which is a good idea, otherwise it displays unnamed budget. If you don't give it a name, here is where I will enter household budget. You have a notes field where you can enter notes about the budget. Right now with the current settings, it will display a 12 month budget period beginning on the first of each month, starting with the month you are presently in. And you can choose if you want it to display on the same week and day by clicking on the checkbox. By clicking on the drop down arrows, you will see the other options you have for setting up the budget. In this example, and for the purpose of this tutorial, I will change the date to begin in December and set the budget for a six month period. If you make any changes here, make sure you select OK to save the changes. In this next step, you will enter your income and expenses. Beginning with your income, enter in the first month's column the total amount of income you are expecting this month. For example, this month I am only expecting $2,500 from wages. So I will click inside the cell across from the salary wages under the first column until the text box appears and enter $2,500. You will notice the income category account is updated with the amount I entered for the income subaccount wages. And the total income amount is also repeated at the bottom of the screen for income and the remaining to budget amount. The remaining to budget amount will start to go down once we begin adding our expenses to the budget. Now it's time to plan how you will spend your income this month. For example, it's always a good idea to start with your fixed expenses first. Fixed expenses are more predictable because they are costs that normally remain the same each month and you have a good idea exactly how much you need to set aside to pay for those type of expenses. A perfect example of fixed expenses are rent or mortgage payments, car payments, health insurance payments, and subscription plans such as a cell phone subscription plan. Now, if your goal is to save money, then consider adding money to a savings expense account as part of your fixed expenses. Once you've entered all your fixed expenses, enter your variable expenses. Variable expenses are costs that can change regularly. Some are more flexible than others and can vary from month to month. Some examples of variable expenses are dining out, paying an electric bill, purchasing fuel gas for your car, purchasing groceries and household items. Continue to add the dollar amounts to the expense accounts you plan to spend money on this month. The goal is to allocate every dollar of your income to an expense account until you reach a zero balance in the remaining to budget amount. Once you have a zero balance, your planned spending budget is set. 
Now it's time to track how much money you're actually receiving during the month and spending. And to do that, select the Accounts tab to return to the account screen. Here's where you will use the checking account to track the income and expenses. Begin by double clicking on the checking account to open it up. The first entry should be the actual amount of income you received so far this month. In the first column, enter the date if different from the default date. Click inside the text box and enter the new date or click on the arrow to bring up the calendar you can use to change the date. The num field and the description fields are optional. In the transfer field, click inside the text box to display the drop down arrow and click on it to bring up your list of budget accounts. Here is where you will scroll through the list and select the budget account that applies to this transaction. But here's a tip. Instead of scrolling through the list, you can enter the first few letters of the account name to bring up the account. For example, I'm looking for wages, so I will enter WA. Here it is. I simply click on it to select it. Next, enter the income dollar amount in the deposit field and select enter on the toolbar to record the changes and save to save the changes and continue using this same method to enter your expense transactions you actually paid so far this month the only difference is you'll enter the expenses dollar amount in the withdrawal field here I have my actual spending record which includes the income I received so far this month and how I'm spending the money you will notice I have a $20 balance, which is unspent money, which I will talk more about later in this tutorial. Now, before we move to the next step, let's recap to make sure everyone is with me so far. We set up the planned budget accounts and allocated every dollar to an expense account. Then we use the checking account to keep track of the actual income received and money being spent so far this month. Now let's move on. Click on the budget tab to return to the budget screen. If for some reason you close the budget screen, you can open the budget again by selecting actions on the toolbar and then budget and open budget. Now it's time to examine our budget to make sure we are staying on track. Monitoring your budget is an absolute must do. And we can do that by selecting run report on the toolbar. In the first column, we have the budgeted column. These are the totals you entered into your budget, which includes the income you're expecting to receive this month and how you plan to spend your income on your expenses. In the second column, we have the totals you entered into the checking account as the actual income received and the expenses you paid so far this month. Now let's look at the difference and how we can work to accomplish our spending and saving goals. Select Options on the toolbar. On the Options screen, select the Display tab. And scroll down and select Show Difference. And then Apply and Close. Now what the Difference column will tell us is if we are staying within our budgeting goals, underspending or overspending. Beginning with the Assets account, the $20 is the actual balance amount left over in the checking account as unspent money. The reason it displays as a negative difference in the difference column is because we created a zero-based budget, meaning every dollar of our actual income received should be allocated to specific expense accounts in our budget. Next, we have the income and expense totals. So far in income, I budgeted for $2,500 but only received $1,500, which leaves a difference of $1,000. If I add the unspent $1,000 to the $20 of unspent money in assets, I have $1,020 left to spend. In expenses, it tells me I budgeted for $2,500 but only spent $1,480. And in the difference column, it confirms I only have 1020 left to spend. Now let's look at where we stand as far as reaching our budgeting goals. You want to focus on the actual money spent column and the difference column. 
A positive difference will tell you the dollar amount you need to fulfill your budgeting goals for that particular expense. For example, I budgeted $400 for car payments and in the actual column it shows I paid $400 and the different amount displays zero which means I've met my maximum budgeting goals for this particular expense account. With the cell phone expense account I budgeted $65 but I haven't paid anything so far this month yet. Therefore the difference column displays the $65 I still need to reach this expense account's budgeting goal. With the groceries expense account out of the budget amount of $200 I spent $65 so far leaving a difference of $135 still available to spend on this expenditure. Now I know at this point you may be wondering what happens if you overspend on a budgeted expense account. Well that's easy the difference will display a negative amount in red. For example here I have my personal items expense account. My budgeted amount was $125 and the amount I actually spent on this expenditure is $140. The difference column displays a negative $15 in red which means I spent over the budget amount allocated to this particular expense account. Now it's time to finish up the first month's budget. Continue tracking the actual money received and spent during the month in the checking account until you reach a zero balance every dollar accounted for. Look at it like this. Any leftover money is your opportunity to add to your expense savings account. Now here I have the finished budget report. For this month it shows every dollar of the actual money received has been accounted for this month evident by the zero balance in assets and it also shows that I didn't receive the total $2,500 I budgeted for and was expecting. Instead I only received $1,800 this month which was $700 less than what I expected. Now that you have an idea how the budget and the budget report works together to help you stay on top of your budgeting goals it's a good idea to print out a hard copy or make a PDF to go over what you have accomplished so far in your budget and work on what changes you need to make for next month's budget to reach your budgeting goals. Continue using this same method we used in this first month for the preceding months. Begin by entering your budget totals, then track actual money received and spent, and run your reports to see where you stand on the budget. A budget success is all about planning and monitoring your budget and sticking with it until you reach your goals. And that's it. And now you know how to set up a simple household budget in GNU Cash. Don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up if you like the video. See you in the next video.